Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us uh, for the GCC, the new Global Green Logistics Hub, partnership, uh, new investment and new investment opportunities. With me today are distinguished panelists here joining us, uh, Sulaiman al Mazroa from his CEO, National Industrial Development Logistics Program, uh, Ali Al, uh, Ali Al Khalifa, uh, Chief Executive Officer for Zone Development, uh, Qatar Free Zone Authority. Dr. Ahmed Al Abri, CEO of Asiat Ports from Oman. Uh, Ali Khalil, CEO of Kuwait Financial Center, uh, Merkaz. And we do know we have uh, Philippe Guillaume joining us from uh, the port of Marseille, and he is the in charge of international relations and business development. Um, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, I will let you briefly let us know a bit more about uh, yourselves and uh, the main things you would like to discuss and present uh, from uh, your entities. Uh, Suleiman, please go ahead. It's on. Yeah. Thank you, Ali. Uh, Honored to be among this uh, esteemed panelist, and uh, thank you for the organizer, Business France, Ministry of Economy, and uh, very pleased to be among colleagues and friends in France. Uh, we are part of Vision 2030. Uh, I've been lucky to be in the Vision 2030 since the inception, uh, almost seven years now. Uh, NIDLIB is one of the programs that was launched to transform the kingdom to a pioneer industrial uh, and uh, global logistic hub. That's the aim of uh, the program. It's uh, responsible for four main sectors, mining, industry, logistics, and energy. These four sectors integrate together to add more value. Uh, the program play as a catalyst of catalyst to use the government, private sectors, uh, NGOs, uh, international partnership to achieve the targets that have been set by Vision 2030. Uh, maybe that's uh, a small brief about Vision 2030. I'll let the room to the rest of the team. Thank you very much. Mr. Ali. Suleiman, it's an honor to be here. Thanks, Business uh, France and Qatar Invest for inviting us to participate in this event. Uh, we'll give a high overall uh, brief about Qatar Free Zone. Uh, we are an entity owned by the states, uh, established in 2018 uh, for uh, mainly bringing foreign direct investment to the state of Qatar. We are looking after two free zones. One of them is uh, Ras Bafantas Free Zone, which is uh, a four and a half kilometers uh, uh, bounded to Qatar or Hamad Airport, the most uh, prestigious airport and have won so much uh, award along with its operator, Qatar Airways. So that's strategically been uh, allocated for mainly logistic and become the hub for all uh, international who would like to consider Qatar as a strategic location for it. The other free zone is uh, Amul Hall Free Zone, which is th th uh, 32 kilometers, uh, bounded connected to Hamad Port, which is, has been recognized by Central Bank as the third integrated hub port in the world. Uh, main objective there for uh, industry and also logistic, who's considering C as a, a tools for transportation and logistic. And the Free Zone. We've been in operating from 2021, even though it's a short period of time. But alhamdulillah, we have more than 400 international companies. We have managed to get a very prestigious uh, companies from France, such as Talas, who is committed for sustainability, or Josan, who is also a pioneer for sustainability and automobile. and. Uh, we're looking for sustainability as a, a tools and how it will enable these investors to uh, expand from their uh, ideas and uh, thinking how sustainable can enable them to meet their target and objective or CSR. 
Thank Lovely. you. Thank you. We'll delve more into uh, the green objectives later on. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Um, uh, hello, everybody, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Ali, for the quick introduction. Um, uh, the ASEAN group, I think it's, um, it's fair to say that um, since inception 2016, it has been created as part of the uh, new uh, government uh, push towards uh, making Oman a uh, logistic um, uh, hub or highway. Uh, the um, uh, position we're in has always been um, a major uh, source for our um, um, success in the, in the past, historically and also in uh, recent uh, future. So uh, the company was uh, created. It has three major uh, ports uh, which it uh, manages. Uh, uh, Salala port, a uh, major uh, transshipment hub, uh, Sohar in the north, and also Dukum, which is uh, part of a major uh, government multi-billion project which started 10 years ago. Uh, three medium-sized ports, uh, two free zones. Uh, one is linked to the Salala uh, port, and the other one is uh, in the north, uh, in Sohar, and another one uh, in the pipeline tied up to the new uh, Muscat airport. Uh, the... Um, uh, the ASEAN group um, uh, has a complete uh, holistic uh, logistic offering and its uh, ASEAN shipping is a major uh, player with uh, more than 80 ships uh, owned and operated under its flag. The uh, uh, company is a main initiator of uh, new direct lines uh, to, the, to the country. Uh, the final uh, delivery mile, ASEAN Express, uh, again, is a major player which completes the, the cycle and also the, uh, the uh, transport, uh, the ground transport. Uh, when I said uh, we are um, part and we are aligned with the vision of the, of the government, the, uh, our uh, vision 2040, and also we have the, uh, the Sultanate uh, Logistic uh, uh, Strategy 2040, both of those look at five major pillars and the logistics is one of those, but it's integrated with every other pillar to make sure that they function. Supply chain is very, very important uh, for the success of the, of the government. And um, again, we cannot grow. We've been growing year on year unless we do it in a sustainable uh, fashion. I think we're going to lose uh, ground. And this is why four, four years ago, a government push has started. And um, uh, it was one of the main... Uh, um, uh, policies which have been established. The uh, zero carbon uh, was uh, announced uh, one year ago. It has the targets, it has the, uh, uh, the, also the, uh, uh, the commercial uh, investment uh, side of it. And also ASEAD has aligned with it. Uh, we're one of the first companies to establish and consolidate our uh, sustainability plan and also our uh, zero uh, uh, carbon uh, policy. Thank you. And speaking of investment, Alil, uh, uh, <laughs> you'll uh, be happy to Hello. share Hello. your points as a of Merkaz, course. which is... Yeah, I mean, uh, let, me, let me start first uh, by echoing my appreciation for Business France and definitely to be among uh, esteemed uh, professionals um, here. Um, I mean, Kuwait Financial Center uh, is uh, almost 50 years old, uh, was established in the 70s. Uh, we're asset managers, investment bankers. Uh, we manage mutual funds and REITs. Um, our REITs uh, have been running since 20 years, um, way before anywhere else in the region. Um, uh, we, uh, you know, as an organization, let me start first in talking because everyone is talking about sustainability. Uh, we believe sustainability is a mindset at the level of the corporation. Uh, we have been reporting on ESG at the level of Marcas many, many years before it became a regulatory requirement. We're publicly listed, obviously, we're subject to CMA regulations, but we, we, we are volunteers in that level, and with every single employee, uh, we talk about the environment, the sustainability, and the governance, and we publish our report uh, uh, annually. So... Uh, Marcas is very much research-based. Uh, uh, most of our clients are institutional. And in, 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 in researching, we look at the trends that basically shape 
the market and the economy in which we operate, and this is how uh, we make uh, money for our investors. Um, and today, uh, the trend, you know, we, we always say basically the trend starts a little bit in the US, then in Europe, goes to Asia, and follows into the Middle East. Um, uh, today here, we're, we, we've bet on logistics many, many years ago. Uh, that was uh, probably around 2010 when we started going into the logistics uh, area, uh, mainly in real estate. Uh, we've done it in the U.S., in Europe, and in the Middle East. I'm very happy to talk about these trends that will reshape it in the GCC reg region at a later stage. Thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you. And from France, representing the Port of Marseille, Mr. Philippe. Yeah, uh, thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, as you can see, I'm not uh, I'm a Louis, uh, <laughs> but uh, I will try to, to do my best uh, to, to be a, a good substitute. Uh, it was a question of agenda, and uh, it was not possible for her to, to, to be there, and uh, she apologized for that. Happy to uh, have you here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I said, uh, the, uh, not I said, uh, the port of Marseille, I re represent the port of Marseille. The port of Marseille is the first uh, maritime uh, French port uh, with uh, more or less uh, 80 uh, million tons by year. Uh, I'm going to, to give you more information about the port of Marseille uh, in the coming uh, minutes. But uh, I would say yesterday, you know, many, many peoples and speakers talk about uh, GCC countries like the place where the green transition will take place uh, because uh, since decades these countries export a lot of crude oils and now uh, these countries will be the place where you can find the new fuel, new combustible, new energies, etc. Et and I have to say that is ex exactly the same for the port of Marseille. Historically, the port of Marseille is a crude oil port. And uh, since now, the end of uh, the late last century, the beginning of this one, we try to find a solution to go out from the old economy, go out from the black economy, and to go uh, towards the green economy and the green new uh, energies, etc. So that's why we have many, many connections and many things to... to uh, to, to, to make and to do with the GCC countries. And uh, in the coming minutes, I will try uh, to explain uh, how uh, the port of Marseille uh, is the best place to deepen uh, and to embody uh, the cooperation between the GCC countries and France uh, for logistics and for industries towards green transition. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and speaking of you know the, the evolution, so the, the the logistics industry itself is evolving very rapidly, um, such with factors such as e-commerce, uh, sustainability, and changing consumer preferences. Uh, my question to to you all, actually, and whoever would like to pick this up, is how do you see the integration of these new factors and, and the ones such as you know um, really talked on shaping the future of logistics in the GCC? Anyone would care to jump in? Please jump in, and um, we'll, we'll go on from one person to another. Dr. Ahmed? Uh, well, uh, there are major factors. Now, what we're realizing, and this is why I think uh, we're getting the policies in place and also um, in, in the Gulf itself. We know that we have six times the container penetration than anywhere else. We know that so much is happening through that region due to its... Uh, Location and also it's very close to major, one of the uh, you know major shipping routes. What's happening now is that we can see all the ports, for example, all the free zones, are there to accommodate industries and create uh, more uh, development. And the direction we see, which is driven by the consumer, is for green uh, products. Now, green products would fail unless the supply chain is also green. And this is why if we just continue as we do things now and we try to power the industries and drive the economies using the same old methods and we don't have that shift uh, into the uh, new technologies, then the GCC would fail to catch up with the requirement of the uh, economies and the developing uh, industries. 
Uh, I'll just give a quick example where since we started, the, um, I'll take the green hydrogen, for example, and there's the push for green steel. It would be, or literature says, technology is still developing, that it, it would start with the um, high heat required industries and then it moves into transportation. They're expecting it's gonna happen at the end of uh, uh, the 20s, uh, more on the 30s, and then for the urban, it would be in the 40s. These things can be easily accelerated. We know what's happening with the world. There's the, um, you know, uh, wars might, uh, you know, wars start somewhere and then they, they make a, a shift in the energy demand. Since we consolidated this, uh, we, we managed as a government to sign a three twenty billion uh, dollar um, uh, agreements with the major players just for the sake of hydrogen gener generation. Now, hydrogen might be the, you know, for biofuels, ammonia, methanol, or uh, green hydrogen. And at the same time, um, uh, last month we signed with, uh, also in the uh, DOCOM for a major uh, factory uh, for uh, green uh, steel. It's not just happening in Oman, it will happen in other parts of, of the Gulf. And because that is the trend, now that's becoming a major sustainability and growth issue, but also it is a big economic uh, uh, chance opportunity for many uh, other companies which are involved in the, in the subject. Thank you. Ali? Just to echo what Dr. Ahmed has since said, uh, in Qatar, we are the first GCC country to have a Ministry of Environment. And that started in year 2000. Uh, uh, and that was because of uh, Vision 2030, which started the same year. Uh, it takes a long time for government to do all the regulations. And we have a full established regulation now for sustainability and what's needed. And it, it takes also investor to bring foreign direct investor. Investor have to have the aims of they are willing to become green. And in yesterday discussion, the uh, operation manager of uh, cas uh, Casino, which is the bigger retail market in the France have stated a very interesting statement, which is 30% of his consumer would like to use sustainable product. So it's the consumer now driving. Uh, that's why in, uh, in a free zone, and uh, for example, Qatar free zone, we have built all the infrastructure to be compliant with the international sustainable. So all the infrastructure required there. We have been winning as a world recognition for it. For example, from the one known ENR in New York, we have won as the best sustainable project for two, uh, 2021. And more in all these infrastructure. However, what we find out that we have to make the investor also responsible for it. So for example, all our logista, uh, uh, for logistic, all the buildings that we are built to suit, we have uh, allowed 30% to become a solar. So all the infrastructure are there, but the investor have to be really on sustainability in his heart. He really would like to be sustainable. Speaking of investor, I see Ali's yes, interested uh, in jumping in. Uh, no, I mean, definitely. I. I I mean, let, let me start, if I want to use a, a very uh, kind of non-politically correct statement, statement saying the investor should forego some return in order to be compliant with environmental issues. Uh, what we at Marcas would say, um, uh, the investor or the producer, I should say, should uh, pay the true uh, cost of production uh, or the true social cost of production. That is a matter of policy. I mean, unless... Uh, we have rules and regulations uh, in place uh, that uh, prioritizes basically uh, uh, to be uh, green and uh, to be sustainable, the investor is highly unlikely to do it. I mean, we are in a competitive market. This is a free market. We are in the pursuit of profit. We are in the pursuit to maximize return within the constraints, both ethical and legal, that are imposed upon us, and we look at Marcas, at ethical before we look at legal, but we have to also be ethical toward the shareholders. Uh, so we definitely are very active lobbying for rules, for policies, for regulations uh, that uh, levels the play field for everyone, not only within the country, but among GCC countries. I mean, I don't, I think we need to take a holistic approach. We cannot pursue 
a green policy uh, in Qatar or in Saudi Arabia or in Kuwait without having other countries uh, follow and match it at the same uh, level. I, I need to go back to your, to your original question, uh, and I agree with you, basically. Um, the retail is the one, I mean, the consumer is the one that basically drives. You have social, social pressure that shape policy making, uh, undoubtedly. And today, we're seeing the trend catching up in, in the GCC. I see it within Kuwait. The younger generation is much more conscientious about uh, green, uh, about, uh, about being compliant, about being green, but no one is going to put basically a solar panel on top of a warehouse unless uh, if they can buy electricity at a much cheaper rate. Uh, so we're seeing this trend catching up, and be I believe it will get better. Um, I, I would like to catch some of the, of the uh, major words that uh, have been said by our uh, uh, panelists. Uh, I'll start that even though I love green, and uh, my, our flag is actually all green, when it's come to uh, our sectors, uh, I prefer uh, the frameworks, the clean, caring about people, environments, sustainabilities, ESGs, because this is actually what put us on the right track for a clear roadmap. And when it's come to Saudi Arabia, we always like to walk the talk, or talk the talk and walk the talk. We have, we have shared with the whole world our goals. We have the, more, the most aggressive targets for renewables. 50% of our energy mix will be from renewables by 2030. That's seven years from now. Two, we have started the most creative city called Neom that based on a sustainable measures and zero carbon. We have the largest hydrogen plants already under construction. We have started the Saudi Green Initiative, and we are not very high in water like Paris and France, but we're still going as aggressive as going to Green Saudi Initiative and Green Middle East Initiatives. So we're putting targets as high as can get, and we are putting already bold moves that require a lot of technology, R&D, to make sure that we are participating to these world challenges. Secondly, from mining perspective, we knew that we will be having a shortage, shortage in critical minerals. So we, two years ago, started the, the largest uh, geological survey to the whole Arabian Shield. It was full of critical minerals, and we already finished 25% of, of that, and it shows a lot of results that we can be contributing to the resilience of supply chain of the world to go to the energy transitions. So these two aspects show how we are aggressively going that way. From that angle and to the business community in France, we are having a lot of construction, a lot of R&D, a lot of technology uh, research and development and deployments. We are mo most likely the most lab available now in the, in the, in the world. So uh, for any bold technology moves, for any uh, uh, partnerships, we're definitely open for that to make sure we solve our people problem, France people problem, and the world problems and challenges toward sustainability for all of us. Speaking of partnerships in France, um, where do you think the best practices uh, could be brought in from the experiences that have undergone in France, Philippe? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to, to come back about uh, the green logistic, because uh, the question for, for, for a port like uh, the port of Marseille is not to paint in green uh, logistic and supply chain, you know, pass through the port. It's not this question. The question is to, for a port of Marseille, is to uh, provide the tools for the supply chain manager, for logistician to make a green logistic, you know. So it means that we should be able to provide for, or not for, we provide all the tools for mm -hmm. developing a green logistic between 
the rest of the world and France, and especially from uh, the GCC countries. How we can do that? Four points. First point is an easy access to the port. This is a kind of the port of Marseille, very easy. You can find it in the south of France, south Europe, give very easy to, to come in the port. And we are able now to operate all kind of cargoes, all kind of ships in the port of Marseille. It's very important. So you can come in the port of Marseille, you will be operated very easily. And uh, uh, it's important to decrease the waiting time, the cost of waiting in the port, etc. It's very important to reduce the impact of logistics on uh, the climate, etc. First is the access. Second point is the surface. The port of Marseille, 10,000 hectares. I said is bigger than the city of Paris. So it's very important, you see. Uh, and in, on this surface, we are able to implement logistics, uh, warehouses, and as well industries for green transition. So we have big surfaces, so we are able to welcome any kind of investment. It's important uh, to have this in mind. Third point is the connection, connectivity. Connectivity with the rest of the world and connectivity with the European markets. When you come in the port of Marseille, you are in Europe. 48 hours after you come in Marseille, you are everywhere in Europe. So it's very easy for GCC countries to get the European markets from a port like the port of Marseille. Last point is very important, digitalization. We have a very, very efficient cargo uh, community system. We're allowed to uh, all the actors to ease the question of customs, clearance, et cetera, et cetera. So all these points make logistic greener and greener because you decrease all the problem you can find along the, the supply chain, et cetera. So it's very important to have this in mind to develop this kind of uh, uh, the, to develop the, the green logistic. You have to give all the tools for the actors to make easy uh, the, the supply chain and greener and greener the logistic. So these... Yeah, just to address your question differently, uh, Ali, from a life exp example. We have uh, a uh, free zone, an investor from France called Gossan. And it's a small company just invested in... Uh, Qatar Free Zone to build their own factory for automobile. And as a free zone, we provide uh, no need for any, it's 100% foreign investment, zero tax, zero customs. So all the other things that has been done. Uh, the investor has built his factory and within uh, a shorter period of time, uh, and he's purely to sustainability and energy saving, found a local partner from the Qatar market. And they have went together a projects in Sydney they're working in a project in Africa. So sustainability is not localized into one country. It's a global effort. As I said, it's, it's need every, the investor and the mindset. And that's where we as a free zone provide that kind of collaboration, an environment where an international investor came by his own and then in his own one decided to have a local investor to partner with him outside of the country, not within the country mainland. And that goes also for bigger investors such as Talas and all the other French companies who are really investing within Qatar from sustainability-wise. You know, the trade between Qatar and France has doubled in the last four years. Today, we are have more than 4.2 billion trade, which is four years ago, it was less than 1 billion euro. So the, the trade in between Qatar and France is heavy. We welcome in all the French companies who are truly into sustainabilities and looking at uh, their own investment as a, a local uh, to the whole world. Like for example, Qatar Free Zone, we, we are less than eight hours fly for more than 60% of the world population. And we are less than, uh, uh, by sea, we are less than uh, three days for 60% of the world population. So as a location wise, if you would like to reach the global, this is your partner. And as a regulation vis-a-vis -vis making uh, cooperation between Qatar and other countries, the regulation has aided in, in, in helping companies be able to access and create opportunities within the free zones that you have. I mean, as a port 
authority that has started doing new projects. Are the regulations keeping up with that? Uh, as I explained, uh, real life example, it is. Mm. It's not something that we say philosophical or documentation. Yes. We see reality. A French company who yeah. managed to do this. Yes, regulation is there and allowed for all investors to be directed investors. Big companies like Talas, mm -hmm. small companies like Gosan. We have the most, uh, the first Google Cloud within the whole MENA region is based in Qatar, data center. We have two data center, Microsoft. So we are an enabler for the investor who is into sustainability, who would like to have, and there is enough regulations. But as I said, Ali, it is the investor main he has to believe in sustainability. Mm -hmm. And if he's not going into sustainability and he's only one a small return in his investment, his vision might be impacted. And it is. It's, it is there. Sustainability is a mandate. Mm -hmm. All the, the, the new generations, just call it X, Y, Z, whatever generation we millenniums we would like to have, they're all into sustainability because they are part of it. Speaking of sustainability plans, I mean, the kingdom, as you mentioned, has a long-term vision. Achieving those, is there a sustainable direction towards achieving sustainability? Uh, of course, uh, I just want to um, emphasize on partnership. Uh, mm -hmm. Partnership usually built on a three aspect, and I think uh, my colleagues highlighting them, but I want to summarize them. First, the common goals. If both partners have the same common goal, that's make it more strategic. And secondly, the win-win. If you think about your partner win as much as yours, that's, that's make it more sustainable uh, partnership. And the third one is strategic, not transactional. Mm -hmm. It's not that you uh, would leave your partner just for the minimum uh, bid price. So that's, that's what makes a partnership. And looking back to the history of France and Saudi relation. It has been deep roots since uh, almost 100 years now. And it's been growing and flourish. And if you see the, the times, the tough times in COVID and, and how these partners been working together and uh, moving among the, the tough times and good times shows that this is the type of relation you need from uh, the two businesses to, uh, to continue. So I really think that if there is a good example of how partnership has been built, Saudi and France is a good example to take. Again, when it's come to uh, Saudi Arabia Vision 2030, it's built on three things. Ambition targets, clear roadmaps, and milestone and KBIs. And from that will come the initiatives, the budgets, and all the required effort to achieve that. Every single initiatives we have in uh, Vision 2030 is a sustainable stamp on it. So we follow the, the maximum regulations, the maximum requirement. We push the, the market towards sustainabilities. Our main uh, driver in the business uh, our vision 2030, it's, a, it's not a government initiative, it's not a government vision, it's all the country, public sector, private sector, NGOs, uh, even citizen and whoever live in this country. So from that, we build our own uh, private sector lead approach to achieve that. Uh, we have Aramco is, is leading the R&D on decarbonizations and Suppression, control, uh, reuse, uh, SABIC and all the petrochemical companies, the same thing, uh, RCGY, which is the Royal uh, Commission for Jubal and Yumba, is leading on having a smart cities that's sustainable based. So that's how we try to achieve sustainability uh, through the framework. Uh, we are, you know, I, my first job in, in, in Vision 2030 was to align the sustainability, sustainability goals with Vision 2030 goals. And I can tell you it was all aligned with the 17 uh, goals of sustainability. So that's just a brief, uh, one of the showing how, how we uh, value this uh, 
event. Uh, we have uh, Badr Badr from uh, Invest Saudi, uh, Ministry of Investment, where actually showing his ability to tell anyone who would like to invest in Saudi, he's the guy. Please, uh, Badr, if you can just. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for joining us today. Um, impromptu, appreciate it. Um, Philippe, you were mentioning that um, yeah. about the, as, as Suleiman was mentioning, partnership, partnership with, yes, yeah, yeah. I knew you'd be interested yeah, yeah. in it. I think as, as it, it could be possible to, to, to develop partnership to, to make, in the short term, uh, a green logistic bridge between GCC countries and uh, uh, France and European markets via the port of Marseille, I think it, it could be uh, possible to, uh, to create partnership, very efficient partnership with a roadmap, et cetera, very precise partnership to be, uh, to be efficient is very important. It's not to sign uh, something uh, 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 on, a, on a paper, it's to, to make, the question is to make a, a, a very efficient roadmap, as I said. Uh, in the part of my say, I said we import a lot of crude oil since decade and now we are developing many many projects to become a port of uh, energies and not a port of one energy and uh, so now we are a kind of producer not of sustainability but of resilience because we now developing some project very important uh, on hydrogen uh, with big investment, a little bit less one uh, billion uh, uh, euros investment f with a, a big factory to produce hydrogen. We have a big investment to uh, produce steel with hydrogen, two billion euros of investment and a total of private and public investment in this kind of thing uh, of uh, 10 billion euros uh, in the five coming years. So, besides this, we have many projects on, on power supply. We have projects with floating uh, offshore wind uh, farm, with a solar farm, etc., etc. I think we have so many things in common because we are totally in the same path, in the same uh, uh, patterns to, uh, towards the green transition. So, we have to discuss. We have to exchange and we have to, to, to find the best way to exchange our best practices and investment as well, for sure. Uh, just a last word uh, about hydrogen. I think it's very important because last time I was with business friends in, the, uh, uh, in this uh, GCC areas, we discussed a lot about exportation of hydrogen in France and uh, some uh, actors of hydrogen in, the, uh, in this area talked to me and asked me if we are able to uh, welcome this kind of exportation in, fr in the port of Marseille. And I think we are developing a, a hydrogen hub in the port of Marseille. So we have to find the way to produce in France, but as well to ease the importation of hydrogen coming from other countries and to, uh, to provide the European markets in hydrogen. So we, we have many, many uh, subjects to, uh, to, 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 uh, to discuss and uh, to put on a, on a real and efficient partnership. So thank you again. No, no, of course. Ali, from yes, the investment I mean, perspective. Uh, I see. Yes, I mean, in, ter in terms of, uh, of partnerships, I mean, first, we talk about, about opportunities. If there are no opportunities, there are no partnerships. Uh, so I have to really make a little bit the case of the GCC. Um, I mean, the trends that are shaping fairly quickly our region is no different than the trend that had shaped in the past 10, 15 years, the US and Europe. I mean, we have what is special about us. Uh, we have uh, very strong demographics. Uh, our uh, personal consumption has been growing at 5.7% annually. Uh, and, and that's going to continue well into the 2030 and accelerating. Uh, yesterday, uh, we, we heard His Excellency uh, Mr. Badr al uh, talking about industrialization. Uh, we expect at Marcus that the industrial output will reach about 16% of GDP. That has a huge demand uh, for logistics. 
um, uh, uh, to say the least. But the third driver, I think, which is very important, other than the retail and consumer behavior, uh, talking about industrialization, the third one, which we, we heard uh, from uh, 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 Mr. Jassim uh, yesterday, is the integration of the GCC to a much closer model to what we see the, uh, in, in, uh, in the EU. I think that alone is going to trigger, trigger a huge opportunity uh, for logistics. I'll give you an example. Uh, we work closely also with PIF in Kuwait. In Kuwait, we have also Kedipa, Kuwait Direct Investment uh, uh, Promotion Authority. Uh, and uh, we're looking at a huge project in Khafji, which includes not only housing, but also logistics to better integrate Kuwait economy uh, with that of Saudi Arabia and facilitate exchange. So we're looking at a very, very positive environment, very conducive uh, for economic growth, very conducive for moving production from uh, Europe uh, to, to, to the GCC region. I'm not talking, and I think it can, it can take substantial, uh, substantial room uh, there. We have worked markets to facilitate such transition and to establish basically production units in, in the region. A complementary element for the GCC cooperation in that sense, for, to, to give each entity its own competitive advantage uh, with regards to uh, logistics. Very good. Ali? Just as a closing note uh, from our end, it's just uh, I'm echoing what's the keynote yesterday, Sheikh Al Anot said. For us, for, uh, we are complementing the whole GCC. In Qatar, we have uh, successfully, thanks to everybody for the World Cup, which is uh, one of the most complex logistic activity. And thanks God, we were done it. And it's one of the most greenery sustainable World Cup that has, FIFA has looked at it, and that's been stated all over. So from sustainability-wise, the commitment is not from Qatar only, from the whole GCC. We as a GCC country are the first oil producers, and that's what the whole world looking at it. Because of that, and all the big companies in the oil and gas industry have evolved to become more greener as a mandate, which is moved to us as a free zones, as Vision Saudi 2030, as Vision 2040 for Oman, for, for Kuwait, for uh, Bahrain. All of us have made that commitment, which is driving from the oil. So we are not following the world. I, I can say, honestly speaking, we are leading from sustainability-wise, and we can see that clearly as a vision for the whole country in GCC. Thanks. Dr. Ahmed? Yeah, I'll, I'll just... Uh, uh, the, the word uh, partnership, I think I'll finish with it. Uh, and as we have uh, companies here who are looking for business, and also we are companies that uh, are also looking for business and also forming grounds for business. Now, what's happening at the moment is, um, as Ali said, uh, we are um, leading. Uh, we actually have the sustainability, as Suleiman sa said, uh, the core part of our um, visions and strategies. We uh, took the worry of uh, commercial establishments by uh, founding and consolidating the frameworks to make it easy to implement. Uh, but going through the, uh, the whole thing, it's not just uh, we want people to participate in our um, uh, R&D at the moment, because that's very important data to create the bigger impact into sustainability improvement. But also things are happening now, you know, solar panels, uh, wind, uh, we are actually uh, running uh, our uh, land vehicles on biofuels. Uh, there are so many things which, uh, you know, our vessels are being fitted with different mechanisms. Uh, those are uh, grounds for major participation at the moment. Uh, Philippe mentioned um, the hydrogen generation and, and uh, green steel. Uh, what's happening now is that ports are becoming uh, uh, readied to uh, have the reservoirs to actually um, house uh, not only the plants for generation, but also in, in case they export or import, you have to have the actual loading, unloading mechanisms. And also, so there is a lot that is happening uh, at the moment. And I think while we all drive for uh, major developments, either in free zones, industrial sites, or uh, ports, um, uh, bilateral discussions into specific uh, uh, opportunities in a big array of, uh, of uh, chances and activities, I think this is the time to 
really get uh, active uh, with it. Thank you very much, Doctor. Seven, closing uh, words? Well, uh, I think uh, the team highlighted uh, how complementing the Gulf uh, each other, how, uh, how we are making generation changes in months now in, in, in the area by Vision 2030, Vision 2040, the, the success uh, of uh, uh, World Cup, uh, Expo, and all the aspe uh, you know, aspects of activity that proving that the generation changes happening in Mons in, in, the, in the Gulf uh, region. Our uh, rooted relation with uh, France uh, give us a huge opportunity to continue over them and build uh, over uh, that uh, good rooted relation. And there are many opportunities that can uh, we can see last two days we've been uh, uh, with His Excellency uh, Bendel Khrayev met with many of the officials and business uh, partners in France. We all share the same vision, almost uh, align Vision 2030 Saudi and France Vision 2030. So a lot of opportunities uh, for both of uh, the countries together. But when it's come to uh, logistics, I think we need to work on building logistics that last for generations. So we need to be aware of how to protecting the environment, how to care about the environment and the people uh, of of uh, of this plant. Thank you. Lovely. I'm getting the sign that we are done for our panel. I would like to thank you all for your time and for your great contribution to this discussion. And I know that you are eager to talk amongst yourselves as well about these. Uh, opportunities and partnerships. Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening on us and uh, have a great afternoon.